Now we're going to do the salt and water part of our experiment. And in this part, we make a solution that we know the concentration of, and then we determine its density, and then we'll make a saturated solution of the salt, salt water, and we'll determine its density. And what would you expect the difference in those densities to be? Which one would be more dense? Well, we'll see. Um, okay, so we're going to start by uh, weighing our graduated cylinder, our clean, dry, 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, and we're going to read off a number for it on our balance. It's 27.541 grams. Okay. And then on your report sheet, the next two, number two and three, are things that you need to calculate. Um, there's an example in the notes, and then we're going to uh, make our solution. So let's look at how we're going to make our solution in this test tube. We're going to add our salt, however many grams that you calculated we need. We're going to um, use a weigh paper to weigh it out. And so the way this works is a weigh paper is kind of like a piece of wax paper. Um, you're going to put that on the balance and then push zero um, so that it reads zero on the scale um, and we've zeroed that container out. And then we're going to put our salt on that. As you add the salt slowly, whatever number is down here um, is what the current mass of the salt is. So this makes it easy to kind of add it gradually until you get it up to that mass that you figured out that you needed on number three on your report sheet. So however much you figured, that's how much we have. And then the nice thing about the way paper is that um, you can fold it and it kind of makes a little funnel so that you can get all of that salt down into your graduated cylinder. Next you add some water, but you don't add all the way up to 10 milliliters. It's, not, it's still below the 10. And you stir it, stir it really well to get it to dissolve. And then you're going to add the rest. Um, if you had just added 10 milliliters to the salt, you might end up with too much volume. So uh, add most of the water, get it to dissolve. And then when you're ready to bring it up to 10 milliliters, you'll use an eyedropper. And so just adding a few drops to get it right up to 10 milliliters, since that's what we calculated our salt for. So now we have 10 milliliters of our 1.80 molar sodium chloride solution. Now we have our 10 milliliters of solution um, in our graduated cylinder, and we're going to um, weigh that. So we are on a mass of graduated cylinder and solution. And the mass that we get is 38.022 and that is grams. Okay, and this is the regular this is the 1.8 molar um, solution, not the saturated solution, the 1.8 that we calculated and got. Okay, and then also it asks us to uh, determine the volume of this, and we made this very carefully. So if we read off this volume, um, the volume of the sodium chloride solution, and we're reading it off, we get 10.0, that's three sig figs, milliliters. Okay, now we're going to look at making our saturated solution. And the way you make a saturated solution is we put the um, water or the solution into a little beaker and we just start adding salt and add salt and stir and stir and stir and add salt until you have salt crystals down here that just won't dissolve no matter how much you stir. Um, and so those aren't going to dissolve. That's because the solution already has the maximum amount it can hold. So after you get to where they just won't dissolve anymore, no matter how much you stir, your solution is now saturated. And we want to determine the density of that saturated solution. 
And so we're going to pour some into a graduated cylinder, um, get its volume and get its mass, and then we can get its density. Notice that when I do this, um, I don't put the salt crystals in there. I make sure that I'm decanting and just, just pouring the liquid because those salt crystals would be really dense. I just want this solution up here. Okay, so we have our um, saturated uh, solution and we're taking its mass with the graduated cylinder. And so this is the mass of the graduated solution and the saturated mass of the graduated cylinder and the saturated solution. And um, its mass is 34.198 grams. And also, remember we put, we decanted some of that in there. We don't have as much this time because we didn't want to get the salt crystals in there. So we're going to read off the volume of our saturated solution off our graduated cylinder, and it's 5.5 milliliters. We're going to have you do some predictions about what should happen as far as um, what solutes will be dissolved by what solvents. And the way this little chart works um, is the along the top, these are the solvents. And these along the side are the solutes. These are all solids and you're dissolving them in these liquid solvents. Okay. And the way the chart works is that um, if you are talking about this place right here and, and whether it's um, going to be slightly soluble, insoluble, or soluble, um, what you're doing is you're mixing sucrose and acetone in that spot. And if you think it will dissolve, you're going to put S for soluble. And if you think it might sum, you would put SS for slightly. And if you think it won't dissolve at all, you would put I um, for insoluble. And how would you make those predictions? Well, you're going to use the rule like dissolves like. And what that means is that polar solvents dissolve polar solutes, or nonpolar solvents dissolve nonpolar solutes. So what you need to know is the polarity of these different substances on here. Let's look at the solvents first. Um, petroleum ether is a hydrocarbon. It is carbon and hydrogen only. And you should know that that will form only nonpolar bonds. And so it is very nonpolar. Uh, water, on the other hand, of course, has oxygen to hydrogen bonds. It can actually form hydrogen bonds between molecules. Lots of little partial charges on these um, atoms. So it is very polar. And then acetone is in between, so we actually have kind of a range. Acetone has a lot of carbon and hydrogen, um, but it also has um, an oxygen that allows it to be a little bit polar. So it's kind of a range there. It's kind of a mid-polarity. Let's look at the solutes. Um, salt, of course, this is sodium chloride, and it is actually ionic. And ionic is kind of like hyperpolar, so consider that to be very polar. Um, let's skip down to um, iodine. Te technically, that bond is nonpolar, so we're going to call that nonpolar. Nephthalene is um, a CNH compound as well, so this is non, we're going to call um, iodine. Uh, non, it does kind of do something a little weird, but we're going to grade you on the pre prediction of what you would expect. Um, and then, so basically we end up with um, salt being really polar. Those are non, and sucrose is kind of in the middle. Um, it has a lot of carbon and hydrogen, but it also has some oxygens that make it um, pretty polar. Um, not as much as salt, but kind of in, in the middle. So from this, you should be able to come up with a pattern of where like dissolves like would be. Um, 
And again, if you think it will definitely dissolve, you're going to say um, S. And if you think it might, some, then SS. And if you think it won't, then you would say I.